This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to this week's In the New Year podcast for your author success with the Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing show. You're going to get a variety of ahas, insight, tips, and how-tos for your author, publishing, and book marketing success. And today, we have a treat. In fact, I'm so thrilled to have her back. It's been too many months. Uh, and and Ann Janzer, who has a brand new, hot-off-the-press book called Get the Word Out, Write a Book That Makes a Difference, will be our guest for the hour. Now, Anne herself is an award-winning author. She's a nonfiction writing coach. She's an unabashed writing geek on a mission to help people make a positive impact with their writing. Anne supports, encourages writers and authors through her books, her blogs, her online courses, webinars, and just plain old-fashioned teaching. Her books, as I've mentioned, is Get the Word Out, Write a Book That Makes a Difference, is hot off the press, but she also has the writer's process and writing to be understood. And welcome back to Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing. Thanks for having me back, Judith. I appreciate it. Well, you know, I, I think with what's happened and we've all gone through, I, I have to ask you, because this is, was this book a gleam in your eyes or is this something that, all right, I'm going to whip this out. It's COVID time. I'm going to work on this. Yeah, it was something I was working on ahead of time, you know, before before we all shut down, I was working on it, but I wasn't. I have to be kind of involved in a book before what the book is clarifies itself to me. Um, I'm one of those writers who figures out what I'm writing about as I as I write and then come back and rework. And that's definitely what happened with this book. And so I had all sorts of ideas and things I was working through. And it, when everything kind of shut down, uh, that's when the theme of the book really emerged for me and it crystallized. And that took me through the rest of the uh the rest of the project. So this was definitely my pandemic project, but it was also um, inspired in a way by uh, what happened to me in the pandemic, which is this urge, you know, that really came forward to try to serve other people, to try to help people who are struggling with their writing or people who are working on a book but but feeling stymied um, by either the pandemic or all of the usual the usual things mm-hmm. that stymie writers that, that we are all very familiar with. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, during this writing that was going on, um, there has been uh, there there has been a lot of writing. We've certainly seen it. I have always said to people that, but should it come out? I mean, as you know, you've seen some wild things that probably would have been better just kept on the computer and play with it (laughs) (laughs) to be blunt but i know that the 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 printers the traditional printers have been slammed slammed with jobs this year the past year um and i know the print on demands the ingrams and the um and amazon they are way behind i mean way behind meaning we can't get you your book and your proof off to you in a day or two it's it's going to be weeks and and that's because of the demand that people are finally saying oh i'm going to finally get that book out get your word out uh, right with right. with the idea on that so well in in your book what was the biggest challenge that you came across that uh, biggest challenge for other writers yeah. as I yeah for okay. other writers maybe well maybe yeah. for you you had you, what challenges did you have um, yeah I, you know, right I, you know what we I all have different of... we all have different challenges you know for me sometimes as, as I've just you know confessed it's really clarifying what I'm doing with a book and and getting to that nugget of 
what is it that I have uniquely to offer to a very specific set of people um, that will resonate with them. Um, but, you know, I think, uh, you know, I did as part of this, this uh, book research process, I did a survey of a whole bunch of authors. And it's interesting to look at what, you know, their challenges are. And for a lot of people who had not yet published a book, their challenges were getting motivated uh, and uh, finding the time, which is interesting uh, because writing is something that we, we tend to put off. Um, it's something that, you know, there's always something more urgent to do than the book, it seems. So, um, but my challenge was really clarifying uh, and just once I once I really unlocked the theme of the book, the rest of it all just kind of fell into place as I talked to people and did the research. So it's wonderful when that when that moment happens when you really figure out exactly what you're doing. <laughs> That's a wonderful moment in the book, as I'm sure you know, in working with people too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I I think that uh, when you mention time, it is always in the top three. The other the other challenge would be money. That I hear, yeah, you know, it's yeah. it's it's they're, they're motivated in some way if they've got it going, but uh, I just the time gets uh, the day job gets in the way, or the kids get in the way, or taking the dog out three times a day gets in the way. I mean, that's that's one of the big ones I hear. All those all those combos, yeah, of it, yeah, and it, you know, it it is a it, it's a big time commitment. There's no no getting around that. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Well, you talk about in your book about gatekeepers. So who are they and what are they and how do we deal with them? Yeah, so we have the 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 outer gatekeepers, which is the one that most of us think about. When we think about publishing a book, we think, well, I've got to find an agent, right? And then mm. I've got to find a publisher. And those mm-hmm. those people are the gatekeepers of of publishing, of traditional publishing. But as you know, as a publishing expert, today there are many more paths to publication that don't always require those gatekeepers. And yet, I still hear people um, bringing in their other gatekeepers. I, I think we have inner gatekeepers. It's like, well, I'm not enough of an expert, or mm-hmm. what if nobody likes it, or you know, who am I to write about this? All of those inner gatekeepers are there Um, hiding behind the external ones. And so when you remove the external ones, you sometimes have to address those internal gatekeepers. Well, you know, I think that this is um, uh, perfect to talk about because that with with the gatekeepers, which I hear people say, well, you know, I would really like my book to be picked up by a mainstream publisher. Uh, And and I said, okay, great, that's plan A. What's plan B? (laughs) Yeah. Let's talk about Plan B, because because in my opinion you should be doing those parallel on that because you uh, I think it's one of with, with those gatekeepers and the the odds of getting picked up by a mainstream publisher are so little today um, in your favor that you better have a Plan B. How much time are you going to let be dragged along if it doesn't go so you can get on with your dream to get your words out? Right. I mean, how right. how much time? Right. Well, you let them go. And now, and then I, I'm sure you're aware that there's, we don't have the big five. I remember what, there was the big 10 publishers. All right. So <laughs> we, we, now we're down to four mainstream yep. publishers with a lot of imprints inside their houses. There's no question about that, but that you, you've got to have those areas. So I love it that you brought up the gatekeepers. So maybe what everyone should do is kind of list them out and be able to assault them and, and, and if yes. appropriate. Put them on sticky notes and burn them. So. Right. right. <laughs> well, we have to bring them out of the cover of darkness and out from hiding behind. Well, you know, it's, it's convenient to say, well, I'll, I'll do this once I get an agent interested because then you have this other task and you're, you're offloading responsibility for your book to some other group of people. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, you so know, I, I like the idea of just – bringing them up and either dressing them or burning them or something, <laughs> but have at least being aware of what they are. Have a ritual. Absolutely. And so, um, you know, I will go over, here's the pros and cons. And there's these four ingredients I always look at, the, the quality, the control, the timing, and the money. Let's go through yeah. each one of them. 
And if you if you're telling me like you do nonfiction coaching, um, I've certainly am a writer in nonfiction and work uh, you know a huge amount in nonfiction area with my clients. Is that you know do you have a critical factor that needs to get out? Can you wait two years before your book gets out? And if the answer is no, you're not doing Plan A. <laughs> right. You know. You know, we're we're going to burn that bridge right now. <laughs> so. Right. <laughs> Well, and the other thing about that plan A, you know, there's there's the plan A that people want, which is what they think the process of traditional publishing is based on what they've known about it from the past. But what plan A is today is, is different. As we said, there's all of this consolidation, and the publishing industry is under enormous pressures. This is not your mother's publishing or your father's publishing. This is not publishing as it was in the 90s or even the early aughts. It's a different industry and you have to understand that uh, if say even a big publisher picks up your book that's not the answer to your book marketing and promotion you're still on the hook oh, for it um, oh, oh no you're doing the marketing you're they may, yeah. they'll write a press release for you but it, yeah, it, yeah, it right. may not even make sense and and, and yeah. you know when i talk about control is it important for you to have input on what the cover looks like or the copy on the back cover. Oh, yeah, it's really important. Well, then plan A doesn't work for you because they don't care yeah. what you think. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, yep. it's a, And if you it, have a really deep understanding of your audience, mm -hmm. plan A may not work for you because they're busy marketing to retailers. And you're saying, no, I need to be going to these associations or I need to I, ha I know who my audience is and where they hang out. Mm -hmm. Then it's you know you may have more success reaching them than a traditional publisher which is unless your publisher is also you know a small press that targets that audience in which case it's a it's a great you know mix if 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 and those are all the ifs and those are things that in creating your plan you need to look at we're going to take our first break and Janzer is with us we're talking about creating the book with no regrets um, and getting your words out we'll be right back This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Is there a book in you? Or another? Author You shows you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being hoodwinked. If you already have a book out, you will find a supportive and brainstorming community that is connected and creative, no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual Author U extravaganza. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publishing. Author U is the premier authoring resource in the country, creating community, education, guidance, vision, and success for the serious author. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author U is for you. Timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted on its social media platforms, and it is free. Discover Author U, where authors go to become seriously successful. Join Author U today at AuthorU.org. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, we're really talking about um, getting your next set of words out. If you've already got one book out, you got to support it in marketing. We're not talking about marketing today. But we're talking about bringing something new from scratch, maybe an old idea, 
uh, than going forward. And Ann Janzer, who is the author of Get the Word Out, write a book that makes a difference, I think is really what people want to do. I want, I don't, I don't want my book, uh, and I'm working with a client who is doing a book on leadership and he, and he and I said, so how many books do you think they're out in leadership? And he sold their hundreds. And I said, there's over 15,000 books on leadership. Oh. So what, what are you going to do? What have, what are you bringing to the party that is unique? On that, so getting a book out that will make a difference for your readers' lives, and I think that that's what we're kind of talking about. And you talk about something called servant authorship. So let tell me about that. Well, so leadership is a great segue into this, actually, because there's something called servant leadership. Yeah, (laughs) it's about servant leadership, right? So a servant leader is someone, as as I understand it, who uh, is there to actually serve the people that he's leading or she is leading and the community in which they are, they're, they're operating. And, you know, I don't know about you, Judith. I've been self-employed for a long time, but if I was going to go get a job, I would much rather work for someone who, you know, thought of themselves as a servant leader, right? <laughs> so, right. Exactly. So the same thing is true, I believe, in the way we approach writing a book. If we're writing a book to pitch our business, if our you know, to pitch our, our business and to grow our business and have a fat business card and to show up as an expert, if that's the goal we're focusing in, I believe it's going to carry through to the book. But if we focus on the goal of how do we serve others with what we uniquely bring, with the people we want to speak to, uh, that guides our decisions all through from everything to the formulation of the idea to how do I choose my publishing path to how do I get through the process of writing, all of those things can be informed by that. And so I put them all under an umbrella of servant authorship. It's just mm-hmm. flipping the switch on how you approach your book project to focus on who you're serving and what's the impact that you want to make on them and letting that ease your path through the whole book and, and what happens beyond as well. Well, I, I, yeah, you're right. Servant leadership was a perfect segue for you. So this is, you're the leader. This is, this is the art, really, of writing the book that you want to get. And, you know, it adds into that what I say, Anne, often is that you want to create a book you never have, you have no regrets about. You never have to apologize for, whether it's the yeah. cover, the way it looks. The, 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 you know, I, I had a book from New York that the cover was so disgusting, I always apo- I hated it. I just oh. hated it uh, and apologized for it. And it took me, you know, thank God it went into reprints fast that I could get off the images they selected and, and get it to evolve. But it was tough. So yeah. The yeah, power. that's hard. I mean, to, to, to not feel <laughs> pride in your... Uh, your book is representing you out in the world, right? And so, so mm-hmm. to not feel that it's representing you the way that you want to be represented is a uh, must have been painful for you Judith I <laughs> it was well yeah and of course I, I that that was during the time and that I was under the um misconception and illusion that only legitimate publishing came out of New York mm. instead yeah. of you know it took me several more years to jump ship yeah yeah. But, you know, I jumped ship from New York 20 years ago, which is stunning for me to think about 20 years, you know. Yeah, and, and you were kind of a trailblazer in that, though. I mean, it took more bravery yeah. to do it 20 years ago than it does now. Well, the, you know, and that came with an order for 1,500 copies of my book. No, yeah, well, that helped. <laughs> that, that, I, <laughs> that I had just taken the rights back for. So I had to jump in the hot water and learn the dollars and cents of publishing, you know, because I was yes. a well-kept author. Anyway, yeah. so let, let's, do, Anne, you did a survey, um, and I, I'm assuming you did it to support it, what you were doing in the book, or, or was it a side deal? No, I did it to support the book. You know, I had started out with this very ambitious, I'm going to interview hundreds of authors for the book, and I did do dozens of interviews, but 
I spent so much time on each reading the author's book and then preparing it, and I did. So I realized I needed a more scalable way to gather intelligence from the author community. So I did a survey instead, and I ended up with about 430 some responses from nonfiction authors. Uh, and it was really fun to see what people said. Not too many surprises, but a lot of validation <laughs> of my process. Well, you know what what happens? I I have done you know dozens of national surveys involving. I think the biggest one we had it. Well, we we had we've had responses with six thousand, five thousand. Wow, huge huge responses that. One of the one of my ahas for survey taking, and these were in the old days where they filled them out and mailed them back. This this was before the online world came into play. And I remember being on a board of a New York company, an association years ago, and I'm walking down. I was back for a board meeting, and there were piles and piles and of of mail bags in the hallway. And I said, "What is this?" And they said, "Well, oh, this is our latest survey." And I said, well, wow. who's going to open them? When are you going to open them? And they, and they said, we're not. We're not. What? That's right. We only open 25% of all our stuff. Oh, oh wow. And, That's interesting. And I know. And that was a huge eye-opener for me. And I, huh. you know, th then I started paying attention to that in, in my own survey taking. And usually, you know, when you do, I, I'm sure when you put together, I, I, I didn't see your survey, but is when you put together that you are, you have some preconceived ideas that this is the answers are going to be, or it's going to go this way, or like, it's like, you know, writing a dissertation, you've got your hypotheses. And right. that uh, I, I think that what all of us have to be open for. There are surprises that come in. Um, yeah. and, and that's always the fun part. But I yeah. found that once 25% of what my, my anticipated response would be comes in, you know what? It's nailed down. It might vary a percent or two either way, but by God, they were right. Um, yeah. <laughs> so ah, that was, that was a big lesson for me. Yeah. yeah, and but but if you're going for stuff, for those of you who are going to do surveys, I really would encourage you to do it. It really does say, you know, according to a national survey, blah 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 blah. You're now the author of this, you know, the the responses. Um, that helps with media pushes and all those kind of things. So I would really recommend all of you start learning the art of, of it. But I always had it on my survey questions, you know, if you would like to be interviewed. Um, let me know. And, 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 and I always reached out. Sometimes I wasn't, but I would thank them. And I'll tell you the gems I got from those interview stories were stunning. And those often went in the book that I wouldn't have had. That's great. Yeah. It's, I had left some open-ended questions in the survey. And when you give a bunch of authors an open-ended question, they write, you know, <laughs> so, um, so that was fun. I got some wonderful responses and commentary, and I did connect with some people who left their email, said, you know, contact me and we'll talk about it. Um, and that was fun because I wanted, I wanted to make it anonymous unless people wanted to not be anonymous, you know. Uh, but but it's I think we do learn as much. We may confirm some hypotheses, but I was still surprised by a lot of of the results um, from some of the the, the degree of, of the answers and some of the. For example, there was one on outlines. You know, how closely does your finished manuscript match its outline? Um, and of the authors, <laughs> the number that said they had that their finished manuscript was an exact match to the outline was less than 6%. That was eye-opening. I thought it was just me always abandoning my outline partway through, but um, oh, less than see, 6% I, stuck exactly to their outline. Uh, see, and so. I that sounds totally normal to me, but the question should have been, do you make an outline? Do you make an outline? Right, that's true. Well, a lot of my yeah. authors, more than half were traditionally published, so I'm figuring they needed to submit an outline with their proposal, right? So I figured that 
that authors who are on that path may feel more wedded to the outline they submitted because mm. it seems like, you know, that's what they bought. I've been speaking with one author who is saying something about that. It's like, no, they what they bought is the best book that you're going to do on this topic, and if you make it better by shifting the outline, that's that's good. <laughs> that's a good thing. Uh, I think that is the correct answer. The other thing is, is you just pick up and you call the editor if you have a, you know, your the person, the acquisition editor, and just saying we've got new information coming in and I need to alter it and add these additional chapters and delete these or whatever. So exactly, yeah. You know, yeah. you know, as someone who sold proposals and that kind of thing, that they're looking for the concept. They want to be the author. Is it going to be the driver? That they got the expertise? Can they pull it off? And then take it from there. So, yeah, it works yeah. that way. All right. So let's let's. I know we're going to come to a break here in a couple of minutes, but I would love to talk more about the survey. So the outline um, that six percent adhered to it. The otherwise said it's anything go. <laughs> what else? <laughs> what, other, what other questions did you have? What were you looking for? Well, what I was really looking for was a combination of people's motivation why they their objectives why were they writing and then at the for the published authors did it meet their objectives right so that's the, the getting down to the the, the motivation the purpose and one of the most uh, interesting facts for me was that uh, i gave people a list of motivations for writing their book mm-hmm. and one of them was i you know i want to serve others with what i know and nearly 80% of the authors picked that as one of their motivations and about 40% of it picked it as their primary motivation. And now mm. the thing to know about this is that my, a lot of my respondents skewed towards writing business and career advice books. So these might be the people that you'd think are following that advice to write a fat business card, but they're saying, no, really, I'm trying to serve others. Uh, I'm also would like the benefits that come from writing a book, but they're keeping their eyes on a, on a different Prize, which made me think that this idea of servant authorship really would resonate with a lot of nonfiction writers. And and was this primary this survey was it distributed primary to the nonfiction crowd? Yes, it was a nonfiction oh. author survey. So oh, okay. Very specific so to that. That response. So we're going to take a break here. That response is would be totally reasonable to me because nonfiction people are solving problems. They're yeah. sharing that expertise yeah. and solving problems and easing the pain. So yeah. serving that would hit it right on the head. We're going to be right back, and Answer is with me. You're listening to your guide to book publishing, and I'm Judith Bryles. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Discover the power of you and your book at the Judith Bryles Unplugged events. Each summer, Judith Bryles Book Marketing Unplugged unfolds over three intensive days working with just Judith. You get publishing strategies, author and book platforms, book marketing panache and pizzazz, and authoring tools to take you and your book to rock star success. In the fall and winter, Judith Bryles Speaking Unplugged includes Judith as your coach and mentor during two powerful days. You will learn how to structure a speech, how to create openings and closings, how to find gigs that pay you and sell your books, and you will get one-on-one coaching. Go to thebookshepherd.com and click on the Events tab to learn how to participate at the next Unplugged Workshop event. Congratulations on getting your book published. The effort you put into your work is truly commendable. But what's next? What will happen to all the knowledge you have worked so hard to acquire to produce your book? Here at Toginet Radio, we can provide you a platform to keep your knowledge working for you through the power of podcast. The subjects our podcasts cover are as varied as the grains of sand on a beach. From life coaching, to military resources, to business success, even to the paranormal. We have a place for everyone. To get started on your next step, 
call Scott at 903-787-5880 or email him at scott at toginetradio.com. That's S-C-O-T-T at T-O-G-I-N-E-T-R-A-D-I-O dot com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. With me is Ann Janzer, and she is the author of the new book, Get the Word Out, Write a Book That Makes a Difference. And she's done a survey um, uh, of nonfiction. So I'd love to, if if Ann, if you will allow me, I'd love to probe in a little bit more and hear what else your survey said. So sure, sure. Yeah. So I love the outline thing. Um, and, and you're talking to someone, my idea of an outline would be like several keywords. I just need to make sure to include these topics in the finished book. It's on a piece of paper that gets crumpled up, moved around, and I re-look at it every once in a while and I just go, that's, that's wow. my outline. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I know people who work with index cards that they keep taping up differently or they storyboard things. I mean, an outline doesn't have to be that, you know, Roman numeral structured thing that you learned in (laughs) high school. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. The A, B, C, and then smaller. Yes. And all that. And actually, I'm a storyboarder. (laughs) I can can lay out a whole book with a pad of sticky notes. Actually, that's what I do, do. And I have different colors Great. that are different coding that I know exactly. And, and I like the portability of it because I can move things around and doing. And sometimes I don't know uh, what's happening. But because I've done surveys, it's really the survey, the, the pain that gets revealed in the survey as a nonfiction writer myself that forms the chapters of the book. Ah, great. Yeah, your research. Well, that, that brings into the point of research. So survey is... One way to add research, uh, which mm-hmm. adds, you know, adds it deepens your expertise. It adds to your authority as an author. Um, and uh, the thing about research too is, so people have this conception, nonfiction authors in particular, that so you you get your idea, you write the proposal, or maybe you do a bunch of research, you write the proposal, you outline your draft. That research is one step that you then step through on your way to writing. Um, and in fact, I asked people about that, and many people. Continue, they don't stop research before they're writing. They write, and then they, the writing reveals what additional research they need to do. You know, so writing and mm-hmm. the boundaries between research and writing are really porous. Um, and even like a quarter of them said, I, I thought I was done researching, but then I started writing, and <laughs> now I needed to do more research. So um, I think this idea of writing a book as a lockstep, you know, you go through a set of uh, steps and phases is oversimplified. Uh, mm-hmm. to experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, so what else um, did you find on it? I, I, maybe I should ask this. Maybe we should talk about surveys, how you do them, just very quickly. Ah, yeah, um, sure. So, be- Because there is an art to it. There is. There is, and it's tricky. I mean, I think, you know, you think it's going to save you a lot of time, but you spend a lot of time trying to write the questions, first of all, in a way that you get clean data, and second, in a way that, uh, get at the answers that you want. Um, I used uh, Google Forms, which was just a really simple uh, way to do it for most people, but it did let me have a branch in my survey. So I had questions for everyone and then questions for people who had not yet published a book and those who had published. So people would see slightly different surveys depending on their experience. Um, and I also had a lot of questions that had an other category and and then people could free write in all sorts of other data. So I have tons of data that is text-based um, and, and some open-end questions about, you know, what was your biggest surprise? What would you do differently? Uh, and so getting to the nuggets of the data in there turned out to be, of course, a challenge because it's all unstructured text-based data. Um, but there was a lot of fascinating insights in there. So it was definitely every time I dig in, I find more interesting stuff. 
Mm -hmm. So the Google Forms you use, like I, you know, I mean, the most recent I do like SurveyMonkey or something like that, that I actually get instant percentages. And then yeah. I get a, a, a curation of all the responses. Does yes. the Google Forms Yeah, and, and Google that? Forms does the same. I could see it in real oh, time. Yes. It would populate okay. graphs for me, and it would put all the data into a, a worksheet. Mm -hmm. I was between Google Forms and SurveyMonkey, and I thought, well, I'm familiar with Google Forms, so I'll, you know, I'll just shorten sure. my, my learning curve. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, I'll, everyone, do shorten your learning curve when you can. Yeah. So, yeah. So. We so have enough we, to learn about publishing. We, do, we shouldn't have to learn too much about survey tools. Oh, I know. <laughs> I, I know. But I, I had my youngest author that published was 15 when she came to me. And actually her mother thought, oh, this would be really great. Let's get Vivian to write a book because it will help her for admission to college. That was that was the motivation, by the way. Wow. And, huh. and, and she said, she says, so to just come up with what she should write about, it was like, whoa. <laughs> it was well and, and I actually did and it was you know what teens want their parents to know so I taught her how uh. to do surveys I taught her how to analyze it um, I taught her how to do interviewing and she created a really good book and it, it's so good it was the tipping point she landed a $45,000 a year scholarship wow for wow New York that's terrific NYU yeah but what a you, terrific story you know, yeah, and it was it always tickles me when I can teach the kiddos something. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but that's right. So how many writing a book did you have? Is, sorry. Writing a book is such a gross experience. It's wonderful to be able to take someone through that too, you know. So that must have been very rewarding. Oh, she did a great job. So, um how many uh qu questions did you have on your survey? Have you found that there is a uh, tipping point where they don't want to go any further? Uh, I don't have the actual number with me, but I had someone take it early on and tell me, and she said, it took me five minutes. I'm like, okay, five minutes seems like a reasonable amount of time. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 So I, I everyone, if you're going to do a survey, my suggestion is when you send out your letter or whatever is attached to it, um, as Anne said, let them know how long it will take. Because Definitely. if someone says yeah, the survey will take five minutes, you know what? I'll give you five minutes. What will tick me off is there's a hundred questions on it. That is not a five minute survey. Right, right, right. Yeah, be careful about how many questions. I mean, as a marketer, I know that the more questions you put on a form, the fewer people are going to finish the form, right? So I wanted to just make it as easy and as meaty as I could. Um, I had a lot of multiple choice questions things like mm -hmm. that, so people could, you know, I, I actually staged them in an order to help people think through, like I would ask them for all of their motivations for writing, and then the next question I had them ask, uh, what was their primary motivation? So the first question got the thought processes going, and then the second question gave them, gets them through to that harder point of picking one. Um, so I, I kind of tried to create it carefully so that it would get people through it as efficiently and yet giving some deep thought to some of the questions. Deep thoughts. Well, that is what you need to, to have. All right, yeah. so let's, let's, let's go back that, um, that, that your surprise was six, the 6% 6 outlines. What other surprises came through? Well, you know, one of the, the things that, and this isn't a surprise, but it was a, interesting to see it come out the way it did in the data was um, the whole confusion around publishing. I had some free-form questions about what was your biggest surprise and what would you do differently. Mm -hmm. um, and I asked the not yet published authors uh, how they plan to be, how they plan to publish. And 30% of them were like, I have no idea how I'm going to publish. Mm -hmm. um, about a quarter said they're going to try traditional first, so they're sort of your plan A. Um, mm -hmm. And about a quarter were planning to do it themselves. But there was just this enormous amount of uncertainty about it. And then when I asked the published authors about the things that they would do differently or their biggest surprises, publishing was one of the themes that just kept coming up. People were surprised by what their publishers did do or didn't do or, um, you know, they, they would do something differently. Like 15%, when I asked them what they do differently, the answer had to do something with how they were published. But it didn't follow. It wasn't like everyone who was traditional wanted to be 
self it was like people just wanted the option they hadn't picked. You know, the self-publishers wanted to try traditional. The traditional publishers wanted to try self or wanted to try hybrid. It's like the grass is always greener on the other side of that publishing fence, <laughs> no matter mm. which side you're on. It's very you, interesting you know, to see how that plays out. That's a phrase I haven't heard in a long time, hybrid publishing. I, I haven't heard anyone talk about hybrid publishing for over a year. I see it kind of bubbling up. I mean, I saw it Again? on my published mm -hmm. authors. A, a lot of them said, you know, this time they had multiple books, and they said this time I chose a hybrid publisher, and who oh boy, I'm just – because it gives them more control uh, depending on the, the hybrid publisher. Um, so mm -hmm. it's, I think we're going to see a growth in that segment. I think we're going to see more growth in that segment. Um, about my, my published authors, I think 12% of them said they'd used a hybrid publisher. And we're very, you know, a lot of them had glowing comments about it. So I think Good. that's interesting as we see the disruption of the publishing market. We're seeing a lot more different kinds of players in there. And that's all to the good for writers, for authors. Oh, I think uh, the disruption has been fabulous. Uh, um, yeah, fa just fabulous. So, so there was just really huge confusion as, as to what publishing, what's the process. I'm kind of the, the whole process going going through um, yeah. on that, and and also it always wonders that th there is so much information out there. Did you ever sometimes wonder, gee, aren't you aren't you kind of checking out or reading what the options are? Have you got any books <laughs> already? <laughs> Yeah, it's, you know, there, 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 there are so many options. And, and the, the, the thing that I ask people to do in my book as I look at their options is to say, okay, put aside everything for a minute and understand the business model. You have to understand the business model that you're joining. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're joining a traditional publisher, what's their business model? Who are their customers? Who are they selling to? You are really part of their supply chain. You are not their customer. You are kind of part of their supply chain. So you have to understand that. Um, and if you're doing self-publishing, you're a publisher. So, you know, who are your customers? Who takes on the risk? Who gets the rewards? I mean, understanding the business models, and if you work with a hybrid, what, what theirs are, that will help you guide your decision in a way that makes sense for what you're trying to do with your book. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. So with this is Ann Anzer. We're really talking all around the art of publishing. Um, and getting your book out, which is getting your words out. But we're going to take our final break. And and I would love to see what you found out. Um, I'm assuming you might have had some questions dealing with book marketing or anything like that. And Indeed. I always find, yeah, okay, that's the Achilles heel. And yep. that's so let's focus on our last segment, book marketing and beyond. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Are you confused about publishing options? Do you know which printing option is best for your book? Does your stomach flip when you think about selling books? Or do you feel overwhelmed with what to do about book marketing and publicity? Get the answers and much more. Get them and from someone who knows publishing inside and out from both the traditional and independent sides how to make a successful book. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so. Or you can create a book that looks and feels classy build your brand and platform and is a success a bestseller it is your choice you choose if you want author and publishing success you want Judith Bryles as your book coach sign up for her weekly blogs and easing at the bookshepherd.com The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing, and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and guide to collaborate with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. Publishing is riddled with obstacles. 
sometimes nightmares for the author. You do not need more problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Riles will shepherd you through the maze and chaos. At times, she has had to step in and rescue a book. A book that has been sabotaged by a publisher, by a publishing service provider, and sometimes even by the author. If you want author and book success, connect with her today at thebookshepherd.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book. If you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, so we are uh, looking at, you got the book, all right, the book is coming. And in my opinion, you all should be marketing your book when you start writing your book. All right, so maybe you didn't do it. <laughs> so now what do we do? <laughs> and how we, let's jump in here. What did, what did the survey say? Survey says, what did it say about book marketing? Survey, survey says that the marketing, you know, definitely popped up as the biggest surprise for the author, published authors, and also the one thing that they would be, they would do differently. People are like, whoa, okay, if I were doing this again, I would start marketing earlier. I would have a more robust marketing plan. I would, you know, so um, marketing is is the the thing that takes some authors by surprise. It's the thing that some authors dread, um, which I think is a mistake to dread it. Um, but it's it's definitely the tricky part, and there's no really super easy answers to it. Um, what what I suggest when I when I talk to authors is that we reframe the way we think about book marketing. A lot of us, you know, approach it like, oh, I got to do this marketing. What? It's hard. I don't know anything about marketing. Um, but really, marketing is about fulfilling the purpose of your book. It's about how you serve the people that you want to reach with your book. And so, if you bring that servant authorship feeling all the way to the marketing end of it, you'll see, oh, I'm just trying to put the book in the hands of the people who are going to get the most value from it. So I can think creatively about how I might do that. Uh, mm -hmm. That's that's my personal approach to marketing, uh, especially for a nonfiction book. But I think it also works for fiction. You're still mm -hmm. writing to serve a specific kind of reader as well. Well, <clears throat> I agree. And I have, um, I mean, I've always said, look at You've created a product. We have to get it into maybe this is back to the business model, actually, of it, that your book is a product and it could have other little booklings. So you have more products, but you've got to have a game plan, a marketing plan on how you're going to let people know about it. So I love the idea of the servant um, authorship that who are you serving? What was the purpose? Whether it was a career, whether it was a, you know, the business, whether it is for um, some other arena that you bring into it. That this, So how do you find these people out here who are interested in this career goal you have or the personal goal or fill in the blank, you know, whatever the reason is in your servant authorship? And then take it from there um, and moving it, and then you got to go find out where they're hanging out. Yeah, and reach them. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, so some of the authors that I, I uh, interviewed and spoke with in my book are doing some really creative things about supporting their message. They're not just saying, "Oh, well, what's the three steps I do to sell books?" They're like, mm -hmm. "No, I'm going to create a Facebook community for people who have this issue, or I'm going to create a, 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 a conference, or I'm going to speak." Um, one one woman who she wrote the book Radical Candor. She created a sitcom <laughs> to, to, to spread the messages from the book. Uh, it's not all about book sales; it's about spreading her message. And of course, the more you spread your message to the people with whom it resonates, the more your book is going to sell. That's sort of the natural result of fulfilling the purpose of spreading, getting your word out. 
Mm. Well, I, I think that's that's idea. So you're talking about what authors do, and I kind of pound on them too. Is they've got to, <laughs> uh, well, they've got to change the way they think about this, and and you know, you you refer it to as you've got to just reframe it. Yeah, yeah, it, because I think the way that we, you know, the way we mentally approach it is going to affect the way we feel about it is going to affect how creative we are in approaching it. If we're like oh, marketing such a drag, and now I have to do the marketing. Um, you know, you're not going to come up with a very creative approach to doing your marketing, are you? <laughs> you're, you're not going to put the best of yourself into it. Uh, marketing is just one more opportunity to actually deepen your expertise, to connect with people, uh, to expand your comfort zone. Uh, marketing is as much of a growth opportunity as writing the book itself is, is stepping into promoting the book and getting your word out beyond the, the printed page. That's a growth opportunity. You will, you will learn new things. You will try new things. Uh, and you may discover things that you really enjoy. You may connect with wonderful people. It might be really rewarding if you approach it from that perspective. Mm-hmm. So, I, I think we can't we can't leave today without talking about what do, what happens when you're stuck, and it, we're talking about writing being writing stuck, the publishing stuck, the marketing stuck. So, right. what kind of did you get tips from any of your survey respondents, or this is going to put your coaching hat on? Well, you know, I think I would uh, put my my coaching hat on and, and suggest, well, how, you know, how, how can you serve people? They put aside, just stop looking at the sales data for a moment because that's very compelling, the dopamine hit of like, did I sell a copy today? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. But <laughs> you, you know, you know, we all know what this is like. It's like, oh, okay, I got to yeah. stop looking at that sales data because <laughs> it's getting in the way of the bigger picture. Um, you know, how can I connect with someone? How can I connect with someone in a meaningful way? Uh, maybe get back to your motivation of what it is you're trying to do uh, with your book and keep filling that. Because this is, well, you know, you you know as this is a long-term thing. You better find something that is not is sustainable for you and even enjoyable for you that you're willing to do and commit to and make part of your life to support your books. Um but it doesn't have to be just, you know, running Facebook ads. You know, it can be having meaningful conversations like the one you and I are having right now. Um, that's, the, that's the very best kind of, of possible marketing, right? Get connected oh, with people. Uh, uh, oh, oh, absolutely. Word of mouth. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, one, one of the, you talk about marketing. One of the things I watched uh, last month is a favorite TV show. I started watching The West Wing you know, which mm. was 20 years ago, 20 years ago. Yeah. And I love, you talk about writing. Oh my gosh, what amazing writing. Fast moves it, you know, uh, really, really good. And I think I must have shot out emails to pals saying, hey, if you want to catch this, Netflix has it on till the 24th free, grab it. <laughs> and, and, and start the there binge. There you go. And start the binge. So that... The word of mouth marketing is actually the single best um, in, yeah. in getting it out. And so that's and that's what's going on. So, I, you know, I might say for all of you that one of the trends that 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 the social media gurus are talking about is this whole this the word humanizing that in the connecting the whole thing that whatever you do and put out, what's the human element in it and that emotional content that you can pull in and I don't want to say lure them in because that sounds like you're hux you know you're being a huckster but to uh, be the magnet to attract people because that that's what you know you're you were talking about with the reframing and, and the rethinking about that and that's that is marketing how do you create that element that that person thinks that you are talking reaching out just to them yeah. I think that's where the yeah. magic comes. Indeed, indeed. And you know that the the point about the you know the referrals and the word of mouth, that stuff doesn't 
it barely shows up in the digital world. So if you're chasing the data, if you're chasing the clicks and things, you can lose touch with the human element. And that's the human element is obviously that we write to reach people, not to reach bots, not to reach algorithms. <laughs> but, but that is what they all pull for. And it's just yeah. they, they, they're they're algorithm crazy, and they need to they just need to be careful, um, yeah. and know that this whole thing called marketing starts with one step. It's just one yeah. step at a time on that. Well, before we leave, because we just have a couple minutes, let's let everyone know your your website, which is a n n e. So she's got the old fashioned Ann, a n n e, and Janzer is J is in Jack. A N Z is in zebra E R dot com. And I would encourage all of you, I subscribe to Ann's blog. I always get little nuggets and tips, and I would encourage you all to too. So Ann, before we leave, that you I, I just I want to come back and kiss on your book because I think it's a good book. Uh that get the word out. And you have it in four parts. Can you just kind of we have two minutes here to just kind of kiss on each part what sets it out? Sure, yeah. So I, I broke it into the four, uh, you know, what to do ahead of writing the book, clarifying the idea, getting past your gatekeepers, uh, understanding your expertise and your authority. Um, and then I have a chapter on the actual uh, writing, or not a chapter, my goodness, I have multiple chapters. I have a section on, um, you know, the, the preparing to write, doing the research, outlining, making your plan, curating your stories, you know, getting everything ready, outlining in whatever that looks like for you. Um, a third section is about the actual, you know, work of getting to the finished manuscript, right? everything from getting it all down the first draft to what do you do, um, to, I say, you know, fixing it in post, like, a, you know, you and I know that great writing happens in revision, not, not necessarily in the first draft, and how do you get to that? Um, and then there's a whole section on spreading the word, on what happens after the book is out. And here I think I found a lot of really interesting stories from, from different authors that I interviewed who had creative ways of working beyond the book, of finding and connecting with their people, um, and of listening and adapting to what they were learning from their readers. Sometimes their next book came back at them from the words of readers of their first first book who were saying, yes, oh. but I need this. Oh, yeah, there's no so. question. that No question. Your fans will tell you what they want you to do next. And with that, we're going to end up. And, and Janzers, thank you so much for being on Author Your Guide to Book Publishing. Thanks for having me back, too. This is wonderful talking to you. You are so welcome. Everyone, have a great week. Happy New Year to all of you. And just keep on writing and definitely publish. Thank you for being a part of Your Guide to Book Publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Each 